So yesterday we talked about how to find and then develop an adventure around a character in the game, which is really a conversation between the player or the players and the game master, the dungeon master. And today we're going to follow up on that in discussing how to make that adventure very easily and quickly satisfying, which means we're going to talk about tone. Hey, what's up? My name's Yar. This is PlayerBase, and this is a channel about as a little long hair there uh, from the mustache, a channel about ludology, which is the study of the dynamics of play, which uh, has applications not only in tabletop games, but also in electronic games and in the rest of the world, because basically everything we do is play fundamentally. Today, we're going to talk about the issue of tone. So what do we mean by that? Well, this is what I mean by that. Tone is the word that people generally use, and we're going to use in this conversation, to address the, the feel, the, the sense of weight, of, of dynamic shift or momentum in a game, and how that affects someone's experience of it. So what that means really is, imagine a game where you're fighting Dracula versus a game where the entire thing is a, basically a great Muppet caper movie type situation. Or a game uh, where you're involved in some type of really high stakes fixing of the air conditioning system on a long range interstellar spacecraft, right? You know, Das Boot versus um, Dracula versus the Muppets, they all have very different tones. And you can, with the same people, and, this, and in the same game, sometimes even in the same adventure, use all of those tones and shifting between them, which we're not going to talk about today, we're just going to talk about how to set one up, is something that you can do after a while. But first you have to really get a sense of how you do that. And that's what we're going to talk about. So the way that you set up a tone is by first you give people uh, the, the dead lore or the stationary lore, which is you set up the expectations beforehand, right? In the session zero, when you're talking to people, when you're presenting the game to them, or when you're coming to the game master, you talk about what you're expecting and what you're presenting, right? You know, a game where, um, you know, some of the extended royal family of the high elves uh, return to Middle Earth to fight um, the devil to get some jewelry back is fundamentally a very different tone than a game where... Um, you know, the central plot is revolving around figuring out who is stealing the uh, hot stove crust pies from the windowsill in Hobbiton, right? Those are two very different tones. And you can already tell, you already have an idea in your head on like what they would look like. But how do you, how do you work that as the game master or as the player character? Well, you remember we talked about staying in character? And, and speaking from being in character, that really helps to not destroy the tone because nothing breaks the tone faster than making a bunch of fourth wall jokes, which is easy to do because you can be nervous or people at the table can be nervous and they don't necessarily know that they have permission to get into the game immersively, which is why setting people's permission up, giving people permission, which is a video we did a couple of days ago, is really important. And once you have that, once you have that uh, tacit agreement with everybody at the table, game master and players alike, setting, uh, explaining to people what the tone is, is a much safer and more reliable activity. And how you present the tone really comes down to, let's say, three things. One of them is setting the stakes, right? And before you set the stakes up, you have to put the, you have to set the setting and the lines of force in play. So if you're playing in a game where the lines of force are, um, you know, the complete domination of all life um, in Middle Earth because the devil has some magical jewels uh, made from the light of, you know, the two trees, that's a fundamentally different set of stakes than, you know, someone's going to get their ear pinched because they stole some pies off of a windowsill. So you already know from that, like the, the lines of force, the, the lines of social tension, of cause and effect that are in play. So that's really the, that's the, 
the octave of the stakes, so to speak. And then you have a sense of what the player's goals are and what options and choices they have within that setting. So, for instance, you know, the, the tone of stakes for a bunch of high elves wandering the countryside trying to build a stronghold is fundamentally different than, you know, the extended family of the devil, the other high angel deities who are fighting, you know, r ripping up mountains and throwing them at each other. Like, the stakes are very different there because the level of comparative power dynamic and also, you know, what the ultimate effect will be are very different. You know, if the, if, if the devil's brothers uh, lose, I mean, they don't get to have the family set up the way that they want them to. If the elves lose, like, it's the complete obliteration of their existence and the foundation of their existence. So the stakes are very different. And also, you know, in one of those, you're relatively equal in power, and the other one, very disequal. And so that changes the tone. And the other thing is, when you give players the, the motivations, you give them the, the carrot that they're going to get, that also uh, changes the stakes and the tone. So like in a game where you're the Minotaur librarian, getting overdue late fees or finding a rare book, those stakes are relatively low if nothing is put into play. But you can change the tone by it turning, turning out that the book is, you know, the secrets to life and death, and anybody who reads it becomes a necromancer and can raise an army of the dead at will. Those are very different stakes all of a sudden. It's not just that you're a regular librarian, you know? It's very much an 80s teen adventure movie, like, uh, you know, time bandits or um, time high schoolers or time cop or time time, you know, one of those. And those three elements, right, uh, what the, the setting is in terms of, like, w what the lines of force are, and then also what the power dynamic is, and then thirdly, what the, uh, you know, what the, the carrot and the stick is for the player, all those things set the tone. And if you have that clear, you can, it can, you can if you just write those three things down, it can be clear to you whether the tone is matching the feel that you want to get. Because if you write down the tone and everything is like life or death, then you're not doing the pie stealing adventure. It's not really coming across. Uh, one, this is one of the reasons that people really recommend playing more than one type of role playing game. Because the rules are really there to set the, the stakes and the tone in this way. And so certain games are better suited for certain types of tones, so you might have a better experience playing a different game. And the rules don't really have to be to you very quickly or very strongly. The great thing about D&D, particularly 5th edition, is that it's like a ramen noodle packet. You know, it doesn't really come with too much flavor on its own. You've got to put your own stuff in it. So the fact that it's relatively bland in terms of tone and you can do a lot with it is really one of its strengths. But trying other flavors is also a really good idea. And I've spoken enough for today on this. Uh, let me know how much of this made sense, but even better, let me know what your results are when you try this down in the comments. And we will talk to you tomorrow. I'm GR's Playerbase. Thank you very much for being here and listening to this whole spiel.